from Los Angeles, I'm Brad Lamack. Welcome to Inside the Business of Acting on the Virtual Channel Network. Are you going to look at me like that? Are you going to give me that look this whole time? I'm you're going to, to try to make you as uncomfortable as possible. Very uncomfortable? Is sure. That, that, is it's there, my job. Is that your agenda for this? I don't have a particular agenda. But that's included in the mix of what it, it would behoove me to keep you off balance because <laughs> that way I'll know what's coming. Aha! 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 <laughs> Welcome! And I'm very happy to, and it, it'll get better from here, w with us for this series of segments. We're inside the business of acting with wonderful character actor and acting coach and director, Henry Pollock II. And I th thank you. This My is pleasure. wonderful. And of course, people who are familiar with you from television uh, recognize you immediately from, I think, probably... Well, depending on how old they are, there's two or three things. Um, that you're I actually cover the span of three generations. And there so would be uh, people in the in the seven, mid '70s, right, for when things were, were rotten, rotten, right, and Nottingham. Monster Squad, Monster Squad, and then subsequent to that would be Webster, Uncle and Jerry. Then, uh, at the same time, would have been voicing characters, uh, the highlight of which was the Scarecrow on the on Batman. Batman. Animated talk series. About, we're talk about that. And Tracker Smurf. Yes. And then the game show um, Pyramid. Pyramid. As a, as a guest player. As a guest player, 45 but, times, not that I counted. But you hosted, you hosted and your I hosted own. Celebrity Double Talk. Right. That didn't last as long as you were on Pyramid, six but it was months. a very popular. It was. In fact, TV Guide gave you a huge. One of the best accolade. reviews I received, um, uh, if I may say, compared me to the. Re referred to me as the Jack Benny of game show hosts. And he is? Jack Benny. <laughs> 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 I was just trying to do to him what you didn't see before. Uh, right. Did it work? <laughs> it did. It was very good. Because, it's a violin. Uh, but I keep yes. thinking, though, that there are these icons of certain eras that yeah. people do not know because they weren't around. Right. But, but well, I think we have enough of him... He keep, you, we keep referring yeah. to him. So. But actually, it's very interesting that you mention that because you, speaking of this whole pop culture icon thing, I mean, really from both from when things were rotten and Webster, y you are a pop culture icon. And the game show stuff, you're, you've become a pop culture icon in, 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 many, in many ways. It's true, uh, and it surprised me because I never realized or really embraced the idea that that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the work, it didn't occur to me that that might be a possibility. Uh, it's interesting, though. Webster has never made it to the land of the, the Nickelodeon and or the, uh, what's the other TV? TV Land. TV Land, thank yeah. you, uh, for a variety of reasons. So I don't have the advantage of that having been a continual part of the arc, as it were. But yeah. um, I would say that the game show uh, appearances have locked me in. There's a whole contingency of people who are devoted to the game show genre, and many of whom are very young people who are working in it, and they have these uh, periodic gatherings, and they occasionally call me because I played them. Right. And so. the game show network, of course. The game show You're network runs, yeah. As yeah. did, you know, that's one of the resurgence of when things were rotten, because when Comedy Central television came into play, mm -hmm. We were a staple of theirs, uh, although there were only 13 episodes, which very few people remember. Mm. And of those 13, they would run uh, five times a week, the same episode twice a day for the full cycle, for a 13-week yeah. cycle. And then they'd repeat that again. So there was a period of time in which people did really recognize me from that as well. And people you may not realize this. I mean, that was... The first was the first t venture into television for Mel Brooks, right? I mean, he created that he series. Did. He did along with uh, John Bonney and Norman mm -hmm. Stiles. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, oh. and that was the first major television show that I ever auditioned for. Mm. Prior to that, I had done a uh, a one line part on Ben Franklin Part Four, which was my first after job. The, the when things were rotten was my first yeah. SAG job. Yeah, and what was uh, the one line? Uh, yay. I was voting on the Constitution really? of the United States. It, and I, can we get another take of I mean, you, how did you... How well, did I was from Georgia. I was the delegate from Georgia. Ah, okay. And? And it was yay. 
<laughs> that the, was, you hired. The, the joke was, however, and, and we were in, each of us that were hired for this, because uh, it was in the room in which they did this, and Ben Franklin uh, was the lead character, of course, because it was called Ben Franklin Part 4, and mm -hmm. it was a series not unlike the John Adams series. Mm -hmm. And um, I had written everybody that I knew, and not only was my line heard, it was heard, but it I was voiceless because they never came to me. I was never edited in standing up and saying yay. Uh, oh, and so uh, basically, it was if we can borrow the business of acting book as a prop. It was we kind of may I we put this. You, yes. we, like, we didn't see you. You wouldn't see. Me. You would hear yay. <laughs> <laughs> or right, yay. that. <laughs> That's that, how we sold ourselves. Right, right. And thank you for selling a couple of copies of. <clears throat> but you know what? I, you brought me back to a memory about how uh, what I did between. Ben Franklin Part 4 and When Things Are Rotten, because Ben Franklin Part 4 was shot in November of 74, and When Things Are Rotten's pilot was shot in March of 75. Mm -hmm. And during that interim, I worked as a uh, gopher for an art director, and I also was a personal assistant to Nancy Malone, who had a production company, mm -hmm. and I would read scripts for her, mm -hmm. and ended up in what was my other on-camera job, which was playing a police officer in a movie uh, that was, uh, I, I was a racetrack security guard, uh -huh, actually. Uh -huh. and, and the line w was? It, there was no line. Oh, there was not even a... I was just yeah. a force to be reckoned with. Ah. One thing I do remember, though, the camera was put on a track. And I followed that camera, looking to the left of it and to the right of it, as it tracked down, so I knew that my face would always be in the <laughs> shot, and I knew that instinctually. <coughs> Nobody never taught done, you, really. You know, I walked onto the set of When Things Are Rotten, not having done a television show, but I had done a lot of classic repertory theater, which is what saved my patootie. Well, that's great training. But so, how as do a, you, as a teacher, I yeah. always say that the the greatest training you can get for film acting is stage acting first to get the fundamentals down and to know where you are, et cetera. There is a big difference in film acting and stage acting. Well, yeah, I mean, the, quest, the, I mean, the next question is, so how do, you make the tran how do you make the transition from that kind of stage acting or any kind of stage acting to be able to pu pull it back and make it work for film? You have to television. depend upon the director, and you have to have an innate sense about what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, there are classes that are given now. There's a, you know, there's a huge panoply of them that you can draw from, and you do well to do that. And there's nothing wrong with taking an on-camera class, uh, whether it's commercially or uh, in terms of film. You know, uh, Howard Fine is, is a great uh, film acting teacher. He's been teacher doing it for years. And yeah. been doing it for yeah. years, and there's a lot <coughs> of graduates who are very successful to prove the point. Mm -hmm. But I would venture to say that every actor that you talk to that is a good film actor has had a lot of stage time. I was remembering uh, when Sean Penn theoretically w went to Broadway. Well, he had been on Broadway long before he became a known mm -hmm. quantity in the film acting world. Right. But once you become that known commodity, the, they don't want to know what you did before because they can no, be capitalized. Uh, Meryl Streep, right. you know, Yale Repertory Theater Company. Right. So my recommendation is you just well, for, you can learn a lot by watching bad films, mm -hmm. watching bad acting, and remember. You mean like how how not remembering how not to do. Well, just watch the watch them on screen and go, wow! If I had done that, I would have done it this way. Okay, so wait a minute. You make actually a very interesting point. So, are you? See, I would think that bad acting isn't necessarily just the responsibility or the result of bad acting. That bad acting is almost. Maybe my theory doesn't hold any water here, but maybe the, the, the result of bad acting is the result of a lot of things not going right. A director who's not really paying attention, a script. That to, can happen, but what you, yes, and you would not know that reality having not been in the room when the shot was being done. But if you see a consistency in the work, mm -hmm. if that actor is consistently not communicating to you at the time that they're doing it, then I would have, and go, 
yeah. okay, I'm seeing something here and I need to pay attention to what they're, they are doing that they're not, that is not correct or is something that is not resonating with me or is some way that they're not communicating with me. So let me toss this out to you. <clears throat> this is actually an interesting, it's an interesting conversation about good acting, bad acting, and who gets hired to do acting. Mm. Because it seems like there's a, isn't there a lot of bad acting on television? There's a lot of bad acting that people get paid to do, and I'm trying to go, well, is that because the, the industry has just changed in a way that that kind of quality isn't as important as the stuff that's packaged around it, or that it's packaged within, or it seems like something isn't, there's a, hmm, how can I say this, there's a, there's a quality, an element, an essence that's just different now. The disconnect happened. The advent of television, they had to go find actors. And the only actors that they could find were film actors that were willing to move to the television medium. But the great treasure trove was theater actors. And so the very best work that we remember in the golden age of television was all done by theater actors who migrated to television. Live television, really. And the directors point. were theater directors. Yeah. And they were yeah. learning how to use a camera, etc. So all of this was evolving. Nowadays, what happens is, because we're so focused on the look of somebody rather than the substance of somebody, mm -hmm. that we may plop somebody in who has this perfectly fabulous look and may become this huge star at the time that they're on that particular series. But you can see time and time again that more often than not, those people who are picked for that reason oftentimes disappear off of the horizon and go into something else. I think it's lack of skill and lack of training. Mm -hmm. that and so that success, is, yeah, that success then is short-lived. Yeah, but I, I think that you're foolhardy to not realize that it's a lot of training. Most times, you know, people who explode on the screen you think that it just happens at that one moment. Well, there's been, there's probably a huge history there yeah. that's going on and, and you are best served to look at the people whom you most admire and go into their history and find out what their chain of events were that led them to where they got to. It is being, it is accidental. By and large, it's accidental that one person becomes a star and another person doesn't. My uncle always used to say, Luck is being prepared for the opportunity. And I always claim that my, the reason for the modicum of success I achieved was doing that I was so well trained by my schooling, Florida State University, my MFA program, which was at the Oslo Theater and mm -hmm. Florida State, and then doing a lot of plays. I did a lot of plays before I even thought about it. I, mm -hmm. never, I never expected to be in television. And it was only through a fluke that I ended up in the industry to begin with, the film and television industry. Your uncle was a smart guy. What business was he in? He was an insurance guy. Hmm. He was insurance. He was a businessman, yeah. but he ended his life as an insurance yeah. man. And that's the, you, it's the whole reason for this. It makes the difference. Because if you don't understand the business aspect of it, you, you can flail around and make a lot of bad choices. Yeah. You've got to understand the business of it. Mm -hmm. It's an essential component, and we forget that because we are motivated by uh, an emotional level rather than a logical level. And your journey, your journey, <coughs> excuse me, your journey as an actor is, um, is critical. In fact, in our next, we're going to go away. Thank you for holding up the mug, by the way. That's <laughs> an, unpaid in, an unpaid endorsement. Yes. Um, we'll come back. Please stay. You'll stay for another segment, right? I'd be happy to. I want to talk about y your personal career journey. I mean, we've heard little sort of mm -hmm. uh, bits and pieces of, of the highlights of all of that, but a, a career is an ongoing journey of lots of stuff that happens that make you who you are today and who you're going to be tomorrow. Next. Yeah. Sure. So you'll stay. We'll, we'll talk. You'll come back. Henry Pollock II is here. And we are inside the business of acting. And join us for segment two because it's, it, it'll be interesting. And don't know oh, that that was that night in Cleveland. But it depends you, upon you. Aha! You'll have to come back. You're the difference. That, that's true. We'll see you in segment two. Brad Lamack in Los Angeles. Thank you for watching.